So this next chapter is all about radical reactions. And a radical reaction, simply put, is just a, any chemical reaction here involving a radical as an intermediate. And the two of the big ones we'll look at are going to involve either a chlorine radical or a bromine radical as one of the intermediate species. And in this case, a radical just means it has an unpaired electron somewhere. Uh, in this case, these chlorine and bromine radicals don't have uh, either a positive or negative formal charge. They're neutral species. But since they've got that unpaired electron and no filled octet, they are highly reactive species. Uh, when people talk about free radicals and how they can cause mutations and oxidative stress and all this stuff, uh, it's this kind of radical they're talking about. Now, it's not usually chlorine or bromine, it's usually oxygen, uh, but the idea is that it has an unpaired electron which makes it highly reactive. So free radicals are simply radicals with an unpaired electron. Uh, let's take a deeper look here at both free radical chlorination and free radical bromination. So if we take a deeper look here at free radical chlorination bromination, we'll see that the reagents here are Cl2, and then H nu here is the symbol for light. So H nu is the energy of a photon of light, H times the frequency there. Uh, and so in this case, that's the symbol we use. And so it turns out to get these reactions started, we need a radical initiator, and usually light, heat, or a peroxide is generally what you use. And light's kind of the more common. That's probably what I'll use most of the time in this chapter. And for free radical chlorination, it's Cl2 and light. For free radical bromination, it's Br2 and light. Uh, if we take a look here, so in this case, this is a substitution reaction. We're going to replace a hydrogen with a chlorine, and generally it's a hydrogen on an sp3 hybridized carbon. Uh, and the intermediate here, as we said before, is a radical, and we've got a couple of different options here. We have either a secondary radical or a primary radical. So in, secondary radicals are more stable. They follow the same trend as carbocations. Uh, and in this case, uh, because the secondary radical is more stable, that leads to a secondary alkyl halide forming as being potentially a little more likely. Now we'll find out in a bit that there's a little more to it than that, uh, but that's the case. And so it turns out that chlorination is not very selective. And so in this case, we get 55% 2-chloropropane, 45% 1-chloropropane, so a little bit excess for the more substituted alkyl halide, going through that more substituted, more stable radical. But bromination is highly selective, and we see that we get 97% two bromopropane versus just 3% one bromopropane. And so for chlorination, we expect a mixture of products, but for bromination, we usually generally uh, have you predict the major product, and most of the time there's one major most substituted product that is possible. Now the third reagent we'll use in free radical halogenation is a little bit special, and this is NBS. So NBS stands for N-bromosuccinamide, and we'll see a little more about him and what his structure looks like a little bit later. Um, but we specifically are going to use him to brominate most of the time either allylically or benzylically. So either one carbon away from an alkene or one carbon away from a benzene. And we do this for good reason. So it turns out if you tried to brominate allylically and you just used plain old Br2 and light, so if you did this, you might have this reaction competing, one of your old alkene reactions, so which adds across the alkene. So it turns out you've got a lot of Br2 in the solution where you're trying to do free radical halogenation. And so the alkene has a great opportunity to react with some of those molecules and just do an alkene reaction instead of one of the new substitution reactions we're trying to do here. So to avoid this, because we don't want this alkene addition product, that's why we're using NBS. So NBS keeps a low concentration of Br2 in the solution at any given point in time, and that way the Br2 that is there is most likely to do only uh, our substitution reaction at hand, these free radical uh, halogenation reactions. Uh, so that's kind of the deal here. So if you want to brominate allylically or benzylically, you better use NBS. Turns out if it's not allylic or benzylic and you use NBS, it'll work fine. It's just not the normal reagent we'd use. But if you're trying to do allylic and benzylic, don't use Br2 and light. Don't use Cl2 and light. Use NBS and light.